skin cancer is the most common cancer in the world. In fact, here in the United States, one in five people will develop skin cancer by the age of 70. Most people think of skin cancer as something that only happens after years of tanning or repeated burns. But the truth is it can affect anyone, young or old, fair skinned or dark skinned. And when missed, the consequences can be deadly. Here's the encouraging part. When skin cancer is caught early, it's also one of the most treatable cancers there is. For melanoma, the most dangerous type, the survival rate is over 90 99% when diagnosed at an early stage. The problem is many people don't know what to look for. So in this episode, we're going to break down what skin cancer really is, the different types you need to know about, and the risk factors that make some people more vulnerable than others. We'll also cover the early warning signs that doctors look for, the best ways to protect yourself, and the treatment available today. And stay with me until the very end because that's where I'll share one often overlooked sign of cancer that can appear in a place that most people never think to check and catching it early could literally save your life. So what exactly is skin cancer? Medically speaking, skin cancer is the uncontrolled growth of abnormal cells in the skin. Normally our skin cells grow, divide, and die in a very orderly way. But when DNA inside those cells gets damaged, most often by ultraviolet or UV radiation from the sun or from tanning beds, those cells can start multiplying out of control. And that is when cancer develops. There are three main types you'll hear about. Number one is basal cell carcinoma. This is the most common type. It often looks like a shiny bump or a pearly spot. It usually grows slowly and rarely spreads to other parts of the body. But if ignored, it can invade deeper tissue and cause serious local damage. The second one is squamous cell carcinoma. This is the second most common type. It may look like a scaly red patch, a wart-like growth, or a sore that doesn't heal. It's more aggressive than basal cell cancer, and if untreated, it can spread beyond the skin. Third is melanoma. This is the least common of the three, but the most dangerous. It develops in the pigment producing cells of the skin, the ones that give us moles and freckles. Melanoma can spread quickly to lymph nodes, lungs, liver, and even the brain. Caught early, it's highly curable. Missed, it can be deadly. In plain English, here's an analogy. Imagine your skin as a brick wall that protects your body. Every brick is a cell, and these cells are supposed to be laid carefully in place. UV rays from the sun act like a wrecking ball and chip away and break some of those bricks. Over time, if enough bricks are damaged, the wall becomes very unstable and certain bricks sort of multiply out of control. That's what we see with skin cancer. So while some skin cancers grow slowly and mostly stay local, others can be fast moving and life threatening. That's why it's so important to know the differences and to recognize them early. Now let's talk about who's most at risk for developing skin cancer. While anyone can get it, some people are definitely more vulnerable than others. The first thing is UV exposure. This is the single biggest risk factor for skin cancer. It is exposure to ultraviolet radiation. This comes from the sun or from tanning beds. Just one blistering sunburn in childhood or in early adolescence nearly doubles your risk of developing melanoma later in life. We get about 90% of all of our lifetime sun exposure before the age of 18. So this is something really important to consider, especially in protecting yourself, your children, and your grandchildren. Indoor tanning is especially dangerous. People who use tanning beds before the age of 35 increase their melanoma risk by 60%. Now, the other thing to think about is skin types. Fair skin, light colored eyes, and red or blonde hair all increase risk because there's less melanin, the pigment that provides some natural protection against UV damage. But here's the key point. Darker skinned individuals are not immune. While the risk is lower overall, when skin cancer does occur, it's often diagnosed later and at a more advanced stage, and this can be very dangerous. The other thing to think about is family history and genetics. Having a close relative with melanoma raises your risk for sure. Certain genetic syndromes like atypical mole syndrome also increase susceptibility. Another factor is immune system health. People with weakened immune systems, for example, organ transplant recipients who are on long-term anti-rejection medications or individuals with HIV have significantly higher risk of developing skin cancers. There's also age and cumulative exposure risk. The old older you are, the more UV damage you've accumulated over the years. But melanoma is also one of the most common cancers in young adults too, so keep that in mind, especially young women. It's often linked to tanning bed years. Unfortunately, in our family, we had a very dear friend, a beautiful young woman who died way too young from a melanoma of a mole that transformed over the years. Here's a good analogy for you. Think of your skin like a photo album. Every time you go out into the sun without protection, it's like adding another scratch or tear or 
stay into the pages of the album. And over time, that damage builds up. It adds up and eventually those small changes can turn into something much more serious. So while we can't change our genetics or our age, we can absolutely reduce the risk of skin cancer formation by protecting our skin from unnecessary UV exposure. When we talk about skin cancer, it's not just one disease. There are several types and they behave very differently. Again, there's basal cell carcinoma, what we call BCC. This is the most common skin cancer. It accounts for about 80% of all cases, and it usually looks like a pearly bump or a shiny pink patch, or sometimes even a sore that seems to heal and then reopen. The good news is basal cell cancers almost never spread to distant parts of the body. This is really good. But the bad news is they can grow deep into the skin and damage surrounding tissues. Believe it or not, they can even enter bone if ignored. A good analogy here is to think of BCC like weeds in your garden. They may not spread to the neighbor's yard, but if you don't pull them and manage them, they'll take over your yard for sure. Next, we have squamous cell carcinoma or SCC. This is the second most common type of cancer. It often appears as a scaly red patch or a rough bump or even a wart-like growth. It can also present like a sore that bleeds easily and it doesn't heal. Squamous cell cancers are more aggressive than basal cells, but most can still be treated successfully. On the other hand, if you ignore them, they can spread to lymph nodes and even beyond. The analogy for SCC is that it's like a small fire. If you catch it early, it can be easy to put out, but if you ignore it, it can spread quickly and cause really serious damage. Finally, we have melanoma. This is the least common of the big three, but by far the most concerning and the most dangerous and the most deadly. Melanoma develops in melanocytes. Those are the pigment producing cells in the skin, and that's why it often looks like a mole or it starts in a pre-existing mole, like the friend of my family, unfortunately. And then over time, you might notice that it begins to change. Here we think about the A, B, C, D, E rule, and I'm gonna cover that in more detail a little bit later, but this helps spot a melanoma and the warning signs. Melanoma is dangerous because it can spread quickly. It can spread to lymph nodes, the lungs, the liver, and even the brain. I believe that President Carter had melanoma which spread to his brain. It's a very dangerous situation. But when caught early, melanoma has a survival rate of over 99%, and that's incredible for a cancer. But on the other hand, when diagnosed late, survival drops dramatically. Here's the analogy for melanoma. It's like a fast-moving storm. If you prepare early, you're safe, but if you ignore it, the consequences can definitely be devastating. Now, there are a few rare types of skin cancers that we should mention. One is Merkel cell carcinoma. Unfortunately, a dear friend of the family also has that at this time. It's aggressive and it often looks like a firm, painless bump. Then there's Kaposi sarcoma. This is linked especially to weakened immune systems and appears as a purplish patch on the skin. Um, when I was uh, in my training in Newark, New Jersey many years ago, at that time, there was a huge number of patients with HIV and AIDS, and we saw a lot of Kaposi sarcoma. Here's the takeaway. While basal cell and squamous cell carcinomas are more common and often less deadly, melanoma is the one you never want to miss. That's why detection is so critical. The most important thing about skin cancer is this. The earlier you find it, the easier it is to treat. And this is true of so many of the diseases we talk about on my channel. So let's talk about the warning signs you should never ignore. Let me bring you back to that A, B, C, D, E rule for melanoma. That's a great number for remembering this kind of thing, and it helps doctors, dermatologists, etc., to be thorough. The A, B, C, D, E rule, so easy to remember. It's a simple tool. A, asymmetry, meaning one half of the mole doesn't match the other. B, the border. It's irregular or ragged or has a blurred edge. C, color. Multiple shades are worrisome. Brown, black, red, blue, white. When multiple shades are present, that's concerning. The diameter. Anything more than six millimeters, about the size of a pencil eraser, is a concern. And then E, evolving. Any mole that's changing in size and shape or color, if you notice any of these, it's time to get checked. Then we have non-healing sores. Any kind of sore that bleeds, crusts over, and heals again, then reopens, especially on sun-exposed areas like the face, scalp, or hands, could be a basal cell or a squamous cell carcinoma. Also look for new growth or changes. Not all skin cancers come from existing moles. Sometimes they appear brand new, brand new spot that pops up that you've never had before. Anything that looks different from your other marks, especially the so-called ugly duckling sign, deserves attention. One of my staff members developed an ugly duckling on her back. We excised it as an excisional biopsy. It turned out to be a precancerous, atypical hyperpigmented nevus. And so we were glad to get that out early. So if you see an ugly duckling, you've got to get rid of it. Another warning sign is bumps that bleed 
easily. Skin cancers often have fragile blood vessels associated with them. So if you keep cutting or irritating the same spot and it bleeds too easily, that's a red flag. Don't let it go. One of the most overlooked warning signs of melanoma is dark streaks under the fingernails or under the toenails. If I'm not mistaken, Bob Marley, the great reggae musician, died of this. Many people assume it's just a bruise, but if it doesn't grow out in a short period of time, it could be a melanoma starting in the nail bed, and this can be especially dangerous. It's also very important for people with darker skin tones because it's one of the spots that a melanoma will show up. It's a less expected place, but it does happen. Other places would be the palms of the hands and the soles of the feet. The bottom line, check your skin regularly, head to toe, and don't ignore anything that looks or feels unusual. The earlier it's caught, the simpler and more effective the treatment will be. The good news about skin cancer, again, is that while you can't change your genetics or your past sun exposure, there's a lot you can do right now to lower your risk moving forward. Number one is to use sunscreen and use it the right way. Choose a broad spectrum sunscreen with at least SPF 30. This protects against both UVA, the aging rays, and UVB, the burning rays. Apply it generously. Most adults need at least a shot glass size amount to cover all of the exposed areas. Be liberal with this stuff and reapply it every two hours and after swimming or sweating with exercise. Don't forget the easy to miss spots, the ears, especially tips of the ears, the back of the neck, the top of the head for people who have thinning hair and the face and the tops of the feet. Also look at getting some protective clothing, wide brimmed hats, UV blocking sunglasses. Remember, you can get a melanoma on the back of the eye, on the retina. In fact, I knew an ophthalmologist who developed one. Also look at long sleeve shirts and remember that all of these things can do more than sunscreen alone. When you're looking at clothing, look for those labeled with a UPF rating, ultraviolet protection factor. The next easy thing to do, if you're out in the sun, seek shade. The sun's rays are strongest between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. A simple rule here is if your shadow is shorter than you, then the UV rays are strongest because the sun is directly overhead. Next, I tell everybody this, please avoid tanning beds. There's a huge misunderstanding here. Many people believe that tanning beds are safe and don't cause skin cancer. That is not true. Tanning beds are not safe as an alternative to sun exposure. In fact, they deliver concentrated UV radiation. Using tanning beds before the age of 35 increases melanoma risk by 60%. The bottom line is there's no such thing as a healthy tan. Another thing you need to do is regular skin checks. Do a head-to-toe self-exam once a month. Use a mirror and don't forget your scalp, soles, and nails. See a dermatologist once a year for a professional exam sooner if you have risk factors or suspicious spots. Here's an analogy. Think of prevention like locking the doors and windows of your house. You can't stop storms from rolling in the area, but you can lower the chance of serious damage to your home. Protecting your skin works the same way. Small habits add up to big protection over time. When it comes to skin cancer, the treatment really depends on the type of cancer involved, how early it's found, and where it's located. First and foremost is surgical removal. This is the gold standard for most basal cell and squamous cell cancers, and this treatment is simple and surgical. There's nothing more satisfying as a surgeon than to remove a skin cancer in its entirety and cure a patient. I've done it countless times. Your doctor will simply numb the area around the cancer, cut out the tumor, typically in an elliptical shape, and a small margin of healthy skin surrounding the cancer will ensure that all the malignant cells are gone. In many cases, this is a quick outpatient procedure with a very, very high cure rate. On the other hand, there's something called Mohs micrographic surgery. This is for cancers on the face or other sensitive areas. Specialized dermatologists often use a technique called Mohs surgery, and this is where the tumor is removed in very thin layers and very tiny bits and pieces examined under a microscope immediately to make sure all of the cancer cells are gone. Surgeon keeps removing tissue layer by layer until no malignant cells remain. This can be done typically in critical areas around the corner of the eye, corner of the mouth, the nose, very sensitive areas where you don't want to make big defects in the patient's face or other parts of the body. The advantage, of course, is to get maximum cancer removal with minimal damage to the healthy tissues. This gives an excellent cosmetic result in most cases, and there's a lot of tissue preservation, which can be critically important, not just cosmetically, but functionally. Imagine having your eye damaged so it couldn't close properly. The next treatment would be radiation therapy. This is sometimes used for patients who can't undergo surgery for whatever reason, or for tumors, again, in very tricky spots. Here,
or high energy beams are targeted against cancer cells, destroying them without any incision. And then we have topical or minimally invasive treatments. This is especially useful for very superficial skin cancers where doctors may use medicated creams like 5-fluorouracil, for example, or techniques like cryotherapy, which is freezing with liquid nitrogen. And these are generally reserved for early low-risk cases. Next, there are advanced therapies, especially for melanoma, when melanoma spreads beyond the skin, treatment can become very complex. One of the tools that we now have in our toolbox as physicians is immunotherapy. If I'm not mistaken, President Carter was treated with immunotherapy when he had a malignant melanoma with metastases to the brain. And I think that he had a quite good response for quite a long time. These are drugs that boost the immune system's ability to attack a cancer. They're like checkpoint inhibitors. Then we have targeted therapy. These are medications designed for tumors with specific genetic mutations like BRAF or MEK, B-R-A-F or M-E-K. These treatments have transformed melanoma care in the last decade, improving survival rates significantly. Here's a key takeaway. For most skin cancers, early detection plus removal equals cure. But for melanoma and advanced cases, modern therapies offer real additional hope even when the disease has spread. So let's take a moment to pull this all together, okay? Skin cancer is the most common cancer in the world, and yet it's also one of the most preventable and treatable, especially when caught early. So that's awesome news. Here's what we've covered today. What skin cancer is, the uncontrolled growth of abnormal cells in the skin, most often triggered by UV damage, the types of skin cancer, basal cell and squamous cell carcinomas. These are more common, but often less deadly. And then melanoma, the fast moving and potentially life-threatening form you never want to miss. Then we talked about risk factors, things like fair skin, sunburns, tanning bed use, family history, immune suppression, and cumulative lifelong sun exposure. But remember, anyone can get skin cancer regardless of the skin tone. Then we talked about warning signs. For example, the A, B, C, D, E rule for moles, non-healing sores, bumps that bleed, newer changing spots, and that often overlooked sign, dark streaks under the nails, the fingernails or the toenails. We talked also about prevention strategies, sunscreen, protective clothing, shade, avoiding tanning beds, and regular self-checks. These small daily habits can dramatically cut your lifetime risk of skin cancer. Then we touched on treatment options. Early removal is often curative. Mohs surgery, topical treatments, radiation, and advanced therapies like immunotherapy give doctors more tools than ever before in curing skin cancers. So what does this mean for you? It means that you have power. By protecting your skin, being aware of the warning signs, and seeking medical help when something looks suspicious, you can prevent most skin cancers and catch the dangerous ones at a stage when they're still highly treatable. And that's what we're looking for. Here's the bottom line. Don't ignore that new mole. Don't dismiss a sore that won't heal. Don't wait until it's too late because the spot you notice today could be the one that saves your life tomorrow. Hey, if you found this video helpful, please share it with somebody you care about. Skin cancer awareness saves lives and sometimes just one conversation can make all the difference in the world. And as always, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Have you ever had a suspicious mole or skin spot check? Have you had skin cancer? What treatment did you have? How are your results? What advice do you have for some of the other viewers? What made you decide to see a doctor? And finally, don't forget to subscribe for more evidence-based health information. If you want to keep learning about prevention, check out our episode on colon cancer risks and diet. It pairs perfectly with today's discussion about early detection and lifestyle choices. I'm Dr. John Chuback, board-certified cardiovascular surgeon. I thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.